Welcome back to the news today. This is the Daily Debate. It's not only East Jerusalem that's a bit tense uh, of uh, late. Israel's northern border is uh, far from calm. As uh, we've reported early on Saturday, an airstrike in Syria was attributed to Israel, though no comment was made from the IDF. But Israel has been highly concerned with the powerful militia Hezbollah obtaining more arms with uh, boosted Iran standing behind it. What exactly is the story and how involved should Israel get in Syria and Lebanon? With me is Dr. Amir Oren, defense and government analyst for our daily newspaper. Good evening. Hi, Lucy. And also Professor Alexander Bly, Mideast expert and former Arab Affairs Advisor to Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir. Good evening. Thank you very Good much evening. for coming. So I will start with you. You know, each and every time that Israel suppose, like supposedly striking in Syria, we are expecting a reaction. Last time it was one for one. You struck, we struck back. And for me, it seems that Israel, in one way or another, expected a much bigger reaction, but it didn't come. How come? Well, that's true. Uh, first of all, there is uh, a slight difference between striking Syria and striking in Syria. Striking someone else's target, which happens to be in Syria, as was the case with Hezbollah and Iran uh, last uh, January. Now, intelligence assessments always uh, tend to be on the more sober, more severe side for fear of uh, uh, being accused of uh, being too lax, too optimistic. So they would tell you, yes, we do expect some reaction, perhaps not a full and all-out war. Uh, something will happen. And last time around, uh, indeed, Hezbollah struck back in the Sheba Farms uh, area, killing two Israeli soldiers. This time around, again, as is the case um, and has been for the last four years, it's not a strike out of the blue, because there is a war going on in Syria anyway. Only yesterday, there were three other airstrikes by the coalition fighting ISIL in Syria, in addition to those in, in Iraq. So uh, if the Syrian regime wants to um, uh, keep uh, mum about it, it can say, well, we had three strikes, four strikes, some for us, some against us, um, deniability. You know, I, I'm trying to understand. In one way, I'm trying to understand the policy, because in one way, Israel is saying, we don't want to intervene with what is happening with uh, Syria because we know that Hezbollah is really deeply involved with what is happening in Syria. We are sitting right now on the fence and watching the situation. But now and then, every now and then, Israel is um, reportedly doing some things in okay. the border, doing some mm -hmm. airstrikes in the border. Mm -hmm. How can you say that you don't, but you are? Oh, it's very simple. You just do. Uh, <laughs> indeed, indeed. First you do. Uh, secondly, you look for the explanations. And I think that the explanations are very simple in this case. Whenever it concerns our security or our long range or medium range security, then it's time to strike. But whenever we're talking on the tactical level and whenever there are no casualties on our side, then we keep quiet. Actually, from my recent many visits, actually, uh, to the Golan Heights, uh, there are uh, has been a number of cases in which they shot at ours on our side, mm -hmm. nothing happened, no casualties, it was not even reported in the Israeli media, and for a good reason, because we're not looking for a casus belli. The casus belli is there once they have a new sophisticated armament whenever we're in danger. But basically, the, the way that I read uh, the strategic map, we're not interested at least in this moment, in a confrontation. Yeah. However, let me perhaps add one more yes, sentence. And yet, many of our top leaders, uh, political and military, will tell you that we are very well underway for the third war in Lebanon. Uh, I just Before we continue, um, let's see what exactly happened. The Israeli Air Force has uh, reportedly struck Syrian military bases near the Syria-Lebanon border. This is Elio Homburg with the details. Another slew of reports on an alleged Israeli airstrike in Syria. Arab media outlets claimed the Israeli Air Force struck deep inside Syria near the Lebanese border on Wednesday last week and overnight Friday. The first strike on Wednesday allegedly targeted a Hezbollah weapons convoy, 
Two days later, Israeli fighter jets reportedly bombed multiple targets along the border with Lebanon near Syrian military bases, which possesses long-range missiles, which could hit deep inside Israel. This area is known to house the 155th and 65th divisions of the Assad military, which are in charge of strategic weaponry, and Israel allegedly targeted the area in the past when it suspected Iranian arms shipments were being delivered to its Lebanese Shiite proxies. Only last month, in the wake of the interim agreement signed between Western powers and Iran, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stressed that Israel would continue to thwart potential threats. The IDF declined to comment on foreign reports, and neither Hezbollah nor the Syrian government have responded to the alleged attacks. Yes. Um... Defense Minister Yalon has tonight repeated uh, Netanyahu's warnings and emphasized that Israel's red lines uh, would have to do with advanced weaponry and accurate ones, which means that um, Israel has given up on the fight against quantity, but it concentrates on quality, and uh, especially those uh, surface-to-surface missiles and some uh, shore-to-sea uh, missiles, if they are accurate enough to hit Israeli air bases or infrastructure, not statistically, but pinpoint, um, and therefore endanger Israel's uh, air superiority or other um, vital targets. So, you know, uh, Australis, we smell, we feel, but mostly we hear. And what we are hearing from the ground or from some, some, uh, is that something is very near, that something is about to happen, that Israel is preparing itself, Israel is, uh, Israel is always preparing itself, but um, Israel is about to lose its patience. And uh, the question is, with this quantity, and let's take it one step further, the next war, if it will happen, it's going to be something that Israel already battled against or something totally new that we will have to, let's say, sum up everything that we know until now and start all over. Well, this is a question for the strategic planners, uh, not for us. But I think that uh, we are far cry from the next war in Lebanon. Uh, However, Hezbollah is now spread all over the place. You can find Hezbollah in Syria, uh, in Yemen, uh, even in Iraq. Uh, and therefore, they have no, and they're suffering losses, heavy losses. Uh, and this is not a good, a good time for them to launch any attack, any major attack on Israel. I mean, as my colleague here has just said, uh, one Katyusha rocket here, a couple, yes, but no more than that, because they risk our retaliation. If it comes to retaliation, I think that we are all prepared for that retaliation, <coughs> but it is not our interest. However, it may be their interest because that would be their time to call everyone to the flag and to evacuate their people wherever many heavy losses uh, they are inflicted uh, on them. In 1982, the Israeli leadership of Begin, Sharon, and General Eitan waited for a pretext to launch a war which they planned uh, long before that. In 2006, it was a miscalculation by Hassan Nasrallah. This time around, there is a relatively moderate Israeli security establishment. There is no war waiting to happen. Um, it could escalate. There could be a series of incidents leading to war. But uh, the Israeli... An operation, not a war, you say? Well, it, it all depends. What are the strategic aims? Uh, taking territory, Israel doesn't uh, want it and can, could not uh, stay in it. Um, hitting at the leadership, it doesn't want to kill, for instance, Nasrallah, because it wants to have an address. But Someone will Hezbollah that... not provoke Israel? Will not try to provoke Israel? Well, you know, there are so many intricacies here. Perhaps General Soleimani of the Israeli of the Iranian leadership will try to challenge President Rouhani and do something. But if you look at two rational actors, Hezbollah and Israel, it's not in the cards. So but, but uh, there what is one more, I'm sorry, there yes. is one more player, and I think that you have alluded to that, and this is Iran, because after the 2006 war, ah, this is what you were going to ask. Yes, no, <laughs> after, because uh, we are. 
we're going to have uh, someone. Okay. We just have somebody uh, uh, with okay. us uh, on Skype uh, from the Golan Heights. Is a reporter for the Iranian Press TV, Hamid Awudat. Uh, good evening. Good to have good you evening, again Jesse. with us. So you heard what we just uh, said uh, here in uh, the studio. So is it so, or maybe the ground is talking in a totally different way? You know, Lucy, first of all, I would like to congratulate you on the exercise of your rights as a citizen of Israeli Arab, so you deserve it. Thank you. So, uh, going back to the news, uh, I know and I believe and what's going on here in the field, it's different than what the media are talking and what is uh, published, uh, especially the last two days on the airstrikes that happened and about the fights that uh, happened also in the northern uh, city of Idlib in Syria. Uh, there will be a change. I believe there will be a change here. It will start from the Golan Heights, and uh, the, this kind of change will uh, will have a lot of partners, and uh, Israel maybe will be part of it. Uh, in uh, 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 as a as a surprise for for everyone here in the area. Uh, Maybe they will stop to to support this kind of militants here in the area because now uh, the, there is a red light that uh, there they start to to see it uh, just uh, far away that Hezbollah is already spread as you guys say here in the area and uh, the operation that they will do. Uh, it's, it will not be a war because it's not uh, uh, this kind of war. It will not be, you know, any political and any any soldier or general that he prepared preparing for this war. It will not be here. It will be kind of operations that it's uh, more dangerous for the Israeli state here in the area. This kind of operations, which mean uh, catushes or bombs or anything or any maybe kidnapped soldiers here in the area, and then everyone go back four or five years ago to the about the situation that happened here. In the northern border of Israel. Go back to the Syrian government and their acts, especially inside Syria. The Syrian government all the time is the, trying to non, not publish what they are going to do, which means uh, after the, the after uh, after what happened in Idlib uh, just yesterday, you know, and uh, all the, the the controlling of Idlib and especially after the support of the Turkish government for the Jabhat al-Nusra militants there in the, in the area, the Syria army took a decision just a few hours ago yeah. to recontrol the area and they don't care how much people will be killed they don't care how much soldiers will be as shahids they don't care how much uh, they will yes. put there you know just they want to take it back why because it's a strategic area you know yeah. they, they are not yeah y Yes, uh, Hamad, uh, just uh, we will get back to you just uh, you're staying well with us here on the screen do you want to answer about this um, no, actually, um, I'll, I'll uh, comment later. Yeah. Amir. Um, the Nusra Front, Jabhat al-Nusra, is uh, Hezbollah's uh, enemy, and therefore it's uh, de facto Israel's ally right now, because it is controlling the um, uh, high ground near uh, Kunetra. But this could change. Is there any uh, sign uh, of cooperation uh, at least a tacit one between Israel and Jabhat al-Nusra. There is, uh, it, it's not a kind of signs, you know, it's uh, reality here in the area. As I say, as I am saying all the time, I am welcoming anyone to come to here to the area and to see which kind of support they have, you know, and especially with Jabhat al-Nusra. They are not the free senior army, how uh, how the IDF spokesman all the time he's trying to say. It's not the, uh, the free senior army. There is no opposition here. There is no free senior army. They are Jabhat al-Nusra. And I have my my proofs and I have my sources, you know, and uh, every everyone can see it. It's it's open for everyone that I can prove for you that there's ISIS here, you know, in the Golan Heights. There's not just Jabhat Nusra. Yes. There's ISIS here in the Golan Heights. There's Daesh, you know, and they are the next pump that will be here in the area. It's not Hezbollah and it's not Jabhat Nusra and it's not the Syria army. Even see the Syria army for 40 Hamid. years. They, yeah. Yes, I'm sorry, because we have only 16 minutes and I don't have uh, uh, half an hour. And you know that I love to listen uh, to what you are to your reporters, but uh, okay. to your reports. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time. So I will tell you goodbye in this point And thank you very much for your report. Thank you. Is it a possible thing that Israel, in one way or another, is giving help to the wrong side of the map? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that we have to keep 
as non-aligned and as neutral as possible. Uh, and I think that the fact that we have some sort of an open border fence between us and Syria to what is known to be as the hospital, uh, I, I believe that this is a problem. I think that uh, this is a very intricate network of factions and counterfactions. Uh, and one day you see them flying one flag, next day the very same people, another flag. Uh, so with whom are we cooperating? And therefore, I do have a problem with our policy over there. I think that the border should be totally closed. Ah, gentlemen, can you once make my life easy? It seems <laughs> not. Thank you very there much. There was a time where okay. there was David and Goliath, and you knew no who more. was whom. No more. No more. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very, thank very you. much uh, for coming to the studio. And we're going out for a small break, two minutes, and I'll be back for the one-on-one. -on -one. Don't go anywhere.